Good afternoon and welcome to this week's weekly weight loss vlog. It's currently Monday, the uh, 11th of March. So yeah, we're talking about last week, 4th of March uh, to uh, yesterday, which was Sunday, the 10th of March. Uh, and we are back to uh, Groundhog Day. Not that the week previous was anything crazy by any means, but... The week previous, I did tackle having my first few beers of 2024, um, and that all went really, really good. Well, this week has been a boring week. I'm not saying, again, that going out and having a couple of beers was dead exciting, but for me, it was something that, you know, it was obviously something I was going to do in 2024. I'm not teetotal by any means, but I talked about in last week's vlog that I've got or felt like I created a little bit of an unhealthy relationship uh, with alcohol maybe a little bit last year, or it was certainly something that held me back when it came to hitting my goals. Um, so yeah, I went out for a few beers, uh, and as I discussed last week in the vlog, the biggest thing that I struggle with around drinking is not the calories in the alcohol, it is the self-control with food. Anyway, got out of that unscathed. Uh, I went 300 calories over my ideal deficit last week and straight back in this week to being under my ideal deficit. Now, it wasn't checking week for me this week, but slap on the wrist, I did get on the scales on Wednesday. Why? Do you know what? I always want to be transparent and totally honest with you guys. I never ever want you to think I am perfect and I'm not, I'm nowhere near perfect. I'm still on my own journey facing some of my own battles. Now, I'll be honest with you, I think that my relationship with food, my relationship with weight loss, my relationship with the scales is about as good as it's ever going to be, but it is not perfect. That little angel and devil that we have on our shoulders that little devil sometimes can rear its ugly head and start pecking away and don't eat pizza, it's a sin, it's bad for you. Now I'm in a lucky situation, not lucky, I've worked hard to do this, but I am in a situation where when that little devil rears his ugly little head, which he does every now and then, I can slap him and get rid of him and the angel appears again. But yeah, a little bit of a... My relationship with the scales is absolutely brilliant, right? I could weigh myself four or five times a day and it would not emotionally affect me whatsoever. But uh, I do still weigh every two weeks. Why? I weigh every two weeks more because, I always say this, I don't want to be a hypocritical coach. I want to be a coach that leads by example. So whatever I tell you guys to do, whether you're just following me on social media channels or you're part of my community or you are fully uh, subscribed to my one-to-one -one plan, yeah, I want to lead by example. And my clients, or I always recommend that you check in every two weeks. And I try and do the same. But every now and then, for different reasons, that little devil talks to me and tells me to jump on those scales and like I say, for me personally, it's not a big issue. And once you create a healthy relationship with the scales, you can weigh yourself every day if you want to. Um, but yeah, why I weighed on Wednesday, it wasn't, oh, let's have a little look, or I'm going to weigh and look at some averages this week, or I want to see what this is. It was literally an unhealthy relationship with alcohol situation. I put two and two together and got five last year. I struggled to lose weight. And that little devil going, you've had a beer this weekend. That's going to have gained you loads of weight. And even if it had, right, I know it's not body fat. How do I know it's not body fat? Because I track my calories and I have been fantastic. That is something I can be true with myself about. I've been fantastic with tracking calories this year. Not missed a thing. I've stuck to my saying, if it isn't in my app, it ain't going in my trap. So um, I've been very, very good with my tracking. But still, yeah, I did. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I jumped on the scales to see, to see what damage had been done, even though I know rational Neil 
knows there's been no damage done. Anyway, I jumped on the scales and I'd lost actually 0.4 of a pound. Uh, I was having a skinny day on Wednesday. I think that's another reason why I jumped on the scales. I don't know if you get those. I've probably mentioned this before, but skinny and fat days. Today, I'm actually having a bit of a fat day. I feel really bloated today and feel a bit chunkier. Uh, again, a lot of it's in here. Uh, but uh, yeah, Wednesday last week, I was like, ooh, I was laid in bed and I was like, ooh, I can feel my ribs quite easily and, and so on and so forth. So I jumped on the scales uh, and I lost 0, 0. 0.4 of a pound. Um, and do you know what? I jumped straight off. I didn't even let them log in my app. I've not logged it down. And I was actually a bit frustrated with myself for doing that for the reasons I'd done it is why I was frustrated. Because, you know, yeah, you might be like, well, you've lost 0. 0.4 of a pound, Neil, that's great. Yeah, I have, but it could have worked in a negative way. You know, I could be like, oh, you had four pints, four or five beers on Friday night, you had four beers Sunday afternoon, and you've still lost weight. Let's do that every weekend. And I don't want to. I can, right? You can do whatever you want. As long as you are consistent with sticking to that calorie deficit, you can have a successful weight loss journey. But for me personally, why do I not want to have four or five beers every Friday night and four pints every Sunday afternoon? Health. And although last weekend, not the weekend's just gone, the weekend before, I did manage to control my calories, I'm not actually that confident with myself that if I did have a drink or a few pints every weekend, I would be able to control my calories the way I did last weekend. So maybe that's just something I need to prove to myself. Anyway, yeah, I did jump on the scales uh, and I jumped on for the wrong reason. That's why I was a bit frustrated with myself, but 0.4 pound loss, uh, not logged it not counting it as a loss um, because, like I say, I kind of got on there for the wrong reasons. But, yeah, as soon as I jumped on, and maybe it's because I jumped on and saw a loss, I don't know what my mindset would have been. I do know what, I, again, this is that little devil. I'm saying I don't know what my mindset would have been if I'd seen a game. My mindset would have been, as it always is, you know, you're probably just carrying a bit of water retention for the weekend. He'll just crack on, but... Anyway, there we go. So no official check-in for me. That's this Friday. So I'll talk about that next week. Um, now, I've had a beer this weekend. Yes, I have. I didn't have a beer last week. Uh, sorry, I had beers last weekend. Am I wanting to drink every weekend? No, not really. But I don't really class. Some of you may think I'm in denial. I'm not. I don't really class what I did this weekend as drinking. Yeah, and what I mean by that is I literally had one beer Friday night and one beer on Saturday afternoon. Um, and why did I have a beer on Friday night? Because I had one of these. I don't know if you've seen them. Um, I saw them in January. So obviously I was doing dry jam, but I saw them in Tesco in January. Corona Ligera, which I assume, well, I, I don't speak Spanish, but because it's a lighter, refreshing beer and it's uh, only 3.2% alcohol instead of normal Corona, which I think is 46 I assume Ligera means a light beer. Uh, and I just wanted to try one. So it was my first opportunity to try one. Bought them in January. Uh, I love Corona. And I thought, ooh, a, a, a nice, light, refreshing beer that is a bit lower in alcohol and only 96 calories a bottle. Thought I'm having one of them. So I tried it on Friday night. Very, very nice. Can highly recommend that if you like a more lighter, refreshing beer. Uh, for me, certainly nice. I mean, I don't mind a Bud Light by, by all means, but... Uh, I felt this was nicer than Bud Light. Um, a little bit less alcohol. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was nicer than Bud Light. Anyway, so I tried one of them. And then Saturday afternoon, uh, Rachel's got a few cousins. Uh, my wife, by the way. Uh, just in case, I think I've mentioned Rachel before. Anyway, uh, yeah, Rachel's got a few cousins, but it was her cousin Liz his daughter's eighth birthday. So the whole family got invited to a pool party. They'd hired at uh, the pool at a leisure centre. So I went down there. I'd not seen Rachel's family since Christmas. So I thought it was a good opportunity if they're all going to be there to go and have a little catch up. So um, yeah, I went and had a good natter with the family. Uh, and then Rachel's other cousin, Alison, we're going on holiday with them in May. Uh, and I'm good friends with Alison's husband, um, Andrew. Um, and I've not seen him since Christmas. So after the swimming party, they all went into the hall at the leisure centre and kids were playing games and having a bit of a buffet thing. Uh, and I'm, just, I'm going to a shop. Would you like to come for a walk? I said, yes. And we went for a walk and uh, nipped to the shop and then we had a cheeky pint on the way back. Uh, and I had a Moretti. I've not had a Moretti since 2024 and it is my favourite beer. So I had a nice pint of Moretti on Saturday afternoon. So that was it. So that was my boozing for this weekend. Uh, so nothing major whatsoever. Right, let's stick uh, the old calories 
on the board uh, and let's see how my heat went. Well, like I said, I've already told you that uh, this week or the week just gone, uh, I have ended up 125 calories under my ideal deficit. So I banked 502 calories on Monday, 392 on Tuesday, 461 on Wednesday, 412 on Thursday, and 355 on Friday. Uh, and that banked me 2,100 calories in total, which I have then used at the weekend. Uh, very, very similar this week. I feel like I've banked very similar calories Monday to Friday. Um, and eating very similar calories Saturday, Sunday. So no sort of big bump of a day and then just a few more extra calories. Oh, quite even. Uh, for my own uh, OCD, I quite like that. Uh, anyway, someone asked me this week on social media, or last week on social media, um, about banking calories and how many to bank each day. Um, and I think they were, they were eating, I think their allowance was 1,700 calories a day and they were trying to, uh, eat 1,200 calories a day and find it very restrictive. I'm like, yeah, you will do. So I recommend you bank no more than 15% a day. Uh, if you've got a big calorie allowance or the odd time, you could creep up to 20%. So uh, what's 20% of my calorie allowance? It'd be 550. So I've never gone up to 20%, even though I have quite a big calorie allowance. Uh, but yeah, you could do if you wanted to, you could go up to, uh, but never, never any more than 20%. So what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, your calorie allowance is 2,000 calories a day uh, on average, and you want to bank some calories for the weekend. I would always recommend banking if your calorie allowance is 2,000 a day on average, between two and 300. So you might eat 1,700 a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and that banks you 1,500 calories to have extra over the weekend. Uh, if you did go up to that 20%, you'd be eating 1,600 a day, Monday, Tuesday, and that would bank you 2,000 calories going into the weekend. But I think 1,600, because remember, you're already in a 500 calorie deficit. So to eat 900 a day for a few days under your maintenance might be quite tough. Now, don't get me wrong, calories don't need to be the same every day. I don't have set amounts, as you can see there. You know, uh, Monday at 2248, Tuesday a bit more, Wednesday a bit less, Tuesday, uh, Thursday a bit more, Friday a bit more. Uh, I don't stick to set amounts, it just is what it is. I roughly sit in a number. So don't be sat there going, I need to eat this many every day. You don't. But I would recommend trying to bank between 10 and 15%. So if your calorie allowance again is 2,000 calories a day on average, you know, the odd day you might be 1,800, the odd day 1,750, the odd day 1,700, and then just add all those together. And whatever you've banked Monday to Friday, take into the weekend. Um, yeah, so it's been a good, uh, a, a good week. Should we go through my food? Let's go through the food. Let's see where I've been at. Anything I've enjoyed eating this week. Um, protein pancakes for breakfast on Monday. Something I've been doing different uh, last week was uh, I normally have either protein pancakes or protein porridge. That's sort of been my go-to in 2024 for breakfast, if I'm being honest. The odd time I'll have a protein bar or the odd time I'll miss breakfast. But more often than not, it's pancakes or porridge. And I always, whether it's pancakes or porridge, drizzle honey over the top. I've been drizzling Nutella or Biscoff this week. So uh, I follow a guy on, uh, I saw him first on, on TikTok called Jack T. He's a really nice guy, bodybuilder, doesn't compete, just loves bodybuilding. Uh, and he eats a ridiculous amount of calories. Why can he, if you've ever seen him, why can he eat a ridiculous amount of calories? Couple of reasons. One, he does stupid amounts of movement. And I think even he says that, you know, what he does for most people is unsustainable. He does like two hours of steps a day, an hour on a Peloton bike every day and goes to the gym. His life just revolves around movement. He's also on performance enhancing drugs. He's not natural by any means. So he burns a ridiculous amount of calories, which means he can eat a ridiculous amount of calories uh, and stay in, in good shape. But anyway, he does these breakfasts in the morning like crumpets and pancakes and uh, and stuff and he eats big boxes of cereal. He's eating, he's crazy. But he melts stuff in the microwave and then pours it. And I've never thought of doing it, so I started doing it this week. So just instead of honey, a little bit more calorific than honey, but 15 grams of Biscoff drivel, uh, driveled, drizzled over um, uh, some protein pancakes and yogurt or drizzled over my uh, protein porridge. 
absolutely sensational. So yeah, pick it in the microwave, 30, 40 seconds, and then stick your bowl on the scales and drizzle 15 grams. Absolutely delicious. Uh, I had some uh, ramen noodles uh, on Monday for my lunch time, um, time. These I get from Costco. Uh, they come in a box like this. I absolutely love them. They are spicy. Uh, you get a box 12 of these badges for £8.50. You can get... I'll just wreck the place. You can get them on Amazon, but they're about 17 quid for 12. So if you've got a Costco card, or if you know someone's got to go to Costco, they are lovely. Uh, I just put a bit of cooked chicken in, a bit of cooked broccoli, and a bit of cooked sweet corn and make like a ramen bowl. Um, uh, Monday afternoon, check out my TikTok. I made this like high protein little cheese and ham toasty thing. Really, really good. Uh, chicken dinner for tea Monday night and evening snacks bag of crisp protein bar. Standard, certainly during the week, standard. Uh, Tuesday for breakfast, protein porridge with Nutella drizzle over. Uh, I had an omelette for my lunch on um, Monday. Uh, which was really, really good. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, sorry. Uh, protein shake uh, for my afternoon snack. Tea was jacket potato, cheese and beans mixed together. So be heat my beans up and mix my cheese in. Cheesy beans. Uh, I'm having it again tonight. It was superb. Uh, I had it with a bit of gammon last week for some protein for the gains. Uh, this week, I'm having it with uh, a chicken breast. Uh, and then yeah, Chris and Protein Bar. I feel like it's gone really dark. It might not. I always say this and it's never that dark, but I'm going to put my light on uh, just in case it has gone really dark on the camera. Uh, right, uh, Wednesday, uh, Protein Porridge again with Biscoff drizzled over. Absolutely delicious. Now, something I did start doing last week was velveting, um, velveting uh, meat. So uh, I, I saw this ages ago. I follow again on TikTok, uh, Zhang's Food Workshop. Well, I think I pronounced that correctly. I apologize if I haven't. Uh, the guy that runs the channel is called Chin and he basically teaches you how to um, make Chinese takeaway food at home. I think they've got their own restaurant and stuff like that. But I've followed him for ages. I've got a lot of inspiration from him for making like um, Chinese dishes at home. Uh, and he basically tells you that Chinese takeaways, you know, you get your chicken, it's really tender, or the beef's really tender. They velvet it. Uh, and velveting it is just a way of tenderizing meat. So Zhang, yeah, Z-I-A-N-G-S, uh, Food Workshop. If I remember, I'll put his, his uh, the name of, of the, his channel in the description. If I don't remember, ask me in a comment and I'll and I'll tell you what it is. Um, but yeah, he's absolutely brilliant. So uh, yeah, velvet and chicken. So uh, velvet and chicken uh, is basically take a chicken breast. So, well, you've got to use this stuff, bicarb of soda. So if you take a chicken breast and let's say this is your chicken breast, right? You're going to cut it against the grain. So if this is your chicken breast, top to bottom, tail to the thick end of the breast, slice like that, very, very thin, into a bowl. I use a teaspoon of cornstarch, heat teaspoon of cornstarch, a tablespoon of light soy sauce, uh, some garlic granules, some salt, some MSG, half a teaspoon of oil in there, and then this stuff, bicarbonate of soda, and you literally need like an eighth of a teaspoon for one chicken breast, I think is basically how it works. I didn't get this last week so i've obviously used the right amount but if you use too much of this apparently it makes the meat go squeaky like halloumi and you don't want squeaky meat um so basically unless you're a cat and you've caught a mouse sorry uh right uh, so uh, like an eighth of a teaspoon of this stuff mix it all up first day on wednesday i did it i left it for 30 minutes it was good i did it again on wednesday afternoon and fridged it overnight to use on thursday it was sensational. And then on Thursday, I did it with a rump steak for, for Friday. Again, it was amazing. So I had chicken fried rice on a, what day? Wednesday for my dinner. Protein shape mid-afternoon. Uh, nighttime, bacon and mushroom carbonara. The recipe is in my first e-cookbook. If you don't have my e-cookbooks, uh, I've got two out there. One is uh, Boss Your Diet by The Real Lost Boss which is uh, breakfast, lunch, dinners, snacks, some side dishes, and a couple of desserts, all low calorie, all high protein, and all extremely simple to make. And my bacon and mushroom carbonara recipe is in there. Uh, and my second e-cookbook is an air fryer and slow cooker 
edition. Um, if you've not got them again, I'll put all the details in the description, along with details to join my community if you want a full calorie breakdown. I'll show you actually a calorie breakdown shortly. Someone asked me about, you know, what uh, what the calorie breakdown was. I'll show you it very, very shortly. I'm actually just charging my iPads. When it's charged, I'll show you what a calorie breakdown is um, so you can see an example of one. And if you want a calorie breakdown in your email, all you need to do is sign up to my community. Uh, it's literally five quid for your first month. There's no contract. So basically it's five quid for me to work out your calories. But you do get months access to the community and all and all that jazz. Uh, and then for tea or oh, uh, evening snacks. Sorry, guess what? Yeah, protein bar and a bag of crisps. Right, uh, Thursday, uh, I did chicken fried rice again, but I did it a bit like a nasty goring. So basically chicken fried rice, but I didn't put the egg in it. I did a fried egg on top of it. So I did egg fried, chicken egg fried rice on, on Wednesday. Fried egg on top and put a bit of curry sauce in there. Just uh, Not curry sauce, uh, curry powder in there. So it's like a nasty goring fried rice. Amazing. Uh, and a protein shake. Actually, yeah, the Boshy Protein Box. I don't know if you've uh, ever bought one of my Boshy Protein Boxes, but if you did buy this month's Boshy Protein Box, everyone's received them now and they're sold out. I always, they're a mystery box, so they're a surprise of different protein snacks. So, for example, you might get something like a protein flapjack in there, or in March's was these honey roast peanuts. A little packet of honey roast peanuts, 50 grams, 280 calories. Peanuts are not a great source of protein, I'll be honest with you. Why? Because they're quite calorie. Calorific, but they are a source of protein. They're also a source of fiber. They're also a source of good fats and they taste delicious. So people are whacking peanut butter and everything um, and it's too calorific to be classed as a very good source of protein. But it is a pretty decent protein snack if your portions are good. And these are like pub bags, basically 50 gram bags. Uh, so I had these, I had a bag of these on... Um, on um, um, Thursday afternoon. Basically, I bought one of my own Boshy protein boxes. I didn't buy it. I just kept one. So I do 48 a month. I sold 47. Why did I keep costs? This month's box was class. Next month's boss, 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 box. Uh, it's going to be very good as well. So again, uh, I'll put the details. Um, if you go to my website, you can get everything on there. Merch, uh, yeah, protein boxes, whatever you want. You can pre-order April's now. So if you want to try one of my Boshy protein boxes. Uh, Thursday night, I had Hunter's Chicken. I've made it. I've filmed it. I've not edited it. I need to. It will be on TikTok this week. Uh, and guess what? Chris and a protein bar at night time. Um, Friday! Uh, protein pancakes for breakfast. Uh, I made, I literally went all around uh, East Eastern Asia, I think uh, you'd class it as, is that right? Uh, for my lunches last week. So I velvetized that rump steak um, on Thursday afternoon, had it Friday. And I literally par cooked some 10 stem broccoli for like two minutes, diced it up, pan fried it with the steak and added three tablespoons of teriyaki sauce to it. Served that over uh, plain rice. I just used the Aldi, is it World Foods long grain steamed rice? It's the best white sticky rice. It's unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, so teriyaki steak and broccoli on Wednesday, on Friday, which is like, what? Uh, Japanese, uh, nasi goreng, is that maybe Thai or Malaysian, uh, Chinese uh, chicken fried rice on uh, uh, egg fried rice, so on Wednesday, and then ramen, which ramen I think is, is that Thai, ramen, ramen's Thai again, maybe Korean, maybe there's a bit of Korean in there, I don't know, anyway, uh, yeah, make food that tastes good. People always ask me, what shall I eat to lose weight? Eat food that tastes amazing. Like my lunches last week. So basically, uh, steak and broccoli teriyaki with rice, fat, 640 calories, right? For my size portion, that's a 200 gram piece of rump steak, yeah? Um, you know, my nasi goreng fried rice on, uh, on Thursday, 555 calories a portion. My chicken egg fried rice on... Um, Wednesday, again, 555 calories a portion. My ramen noodle bowl on uh, Monday, 507 calories. Absolutely delicious food. Really low calorie. You do not need to eat plain and boring food to lose weight. You really, really don't. Uh, Friday night. Oh, Friday afternoon snack. Just had a glass of milk. Uh, Friday night, I did like a, 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 case, a KFC fake away. Some 
chicken, breaded chicken tenders, brioche bun, cheese slice, lighter than, um, um, light mayonnaise and lettuce, and some air fried chips. Uh, evening snacks, guess what? Protein bar, bag of crisps. Uh, and then I had one of those beers. I had one of these uh, beers on Friday night. So that was in my app as well. Always tracking. If it ain't in your app, don't put it in your trap. Uh, Saturday morning, protein porridge. Now, because I had quite a lot of extra calories, I still have my protein porridge Saturday morning, but I had double Biscoff. I had 30 grams of Biscoff poured over the top instead of 15. Unbelievable. You know, people absolutely destroy food in this day and age. I've done a uh, podcast, came out last Thursday, number 26, Fixing Your Unhealthy Relationship with Food. And people might be sat there, again, unhealthy relationship with food, Biscoff spread makes you fat. No, it doesn't. You can eat anything you want within a calorie deficit, right? You also don't need to be too detrimental with stuff like that, going, oh my God, it's really unhealthy. It really isn't that unhealthy. Uh, and always look at a meal as a whole when you want health. Now, health doesn't create weight loss uh, or fat loss. Health is your health. But if I've got a bowl and it's got oats in there, whole grain, right? It's got whey protein powder in it, which is basically concentrated milk protein. Very, very good for us. Um, it's also, you know, contains calcium and bit, uh, vitamins, B vitamins, right? Vitamin B12 uh, and vitamin A as well and a few other bits and pieces in there. I've then got banana in there, ras uh, raspberries and blueberries in there. So lots of vitamins, minerals and nutrients. If I then take something that's not that nutritionally dense at all and there's a reasonable amount of sugar in it but pour a bit of that over a very like healthy meal it does not make that meal unhealthy it really really doesn't it's all about balance uh saturday dinner time dead simple ham sandwich had a ham sandwich and a bag of crisps uh and, and a sausage roll uh, from my local uh, deli I, I just bought went we've got like a local deli bakery in the uh, bakery bakery in the next village i can't speak today at all uh, and i went up there and got some of their ham which is absolutely delicious had it in a sandwich got their bread whole grain and chia seed bread it was stunning so i got their whole grain and chia seed bread made a ham sandwich with that uh had half of one of their sausage rolls split it with rachel and then a bag of crisps absolutely lovely uh had a bit of cake at the kids party on uh saturday afternoon uh, and a few crisps and a pint of Moretti, all in my app. And then Saturday night for tea, we had chippy. <gasps> Been craving a chippy. Uh, we rotate takeaways. So we tend to have one takeaway a week. Um, a lot of classes are full-blown takeaway that's going to be a little bit more calorie-dense than what I'd normally have for my tea. Um, and or we'll go out for a meal. But at the moment, because we've got a lot coming on in April, we've not really been out for any meals. We've just been having takeaways. Takeaways aren't cheap, but they are cheaper than going out for tea. Um, but uh, yeah, we've just been rotating uh, takeaways. Um, so basically, if we have fish and chips, then the next week we'll have Chinese, then the next week we'll have pizza, then the next week we might have a kebab, the week after that we might just go for a McDonald's or something like that. Now, don't get me wrong, pizza, we rotate quite a bit more than anything else. So we never go that long without having pizza because it's our favourite. Uh, but things like fish, I absolutely love fish and chips. It's in my top three takeaways. Rachel does like it, but it's not in her top three. But we tend to have it once every five or six weeks. Uh, and if you only have something once every five or six weeks, it just tastes amazing. So just have fish, chips and peas. It's absolutely beautiful. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and then I did a little chocolate bowl uh, at night time in bed. So a little calorie control, 400 calorie chocolate bowl, which contained a fun size Mars bar. It contained uh, a couple of chocolate uh, coated bourbon biscuits uh, and some M&S cookie dough bites. Absolutely lovely. Uh, so again, you know, a little bit of a sweet treat, but all in perfect control. And then Sunday, um, Sunday's always sugary cereal morning for me. I love sugary cereal. Again, I'm not going to apologize for that, but I understand it's not that healthy for me. Uh, it also doesn't fill you up. So to eat it every day for breakfast isn't going to support my weight loss and it isn't really going to support my health. But having sugary cereal once a week is going to cause zero issues whatsoever. So uh, Sunday morning is generally sugary cereal uh, morning. But you know what I had this week? And it is quite a sugary cereal, to be honest with you. It's kind of branded as being extremely healthy when it isn't really that 
healthy. Uh, I had some Kellogg's fruit and fibre. I absolutely love it. Don't get me wrong. To be honest with you, it's got nine grams of fibre in there. So it had a third of my daily amount of fibre. I had 100 grams of fruit and fibre, 383 calories. Uh, with 150 uh, mils of semi-skim milk and uh, and a drizzle of honey over the top. So uh, sugar in that, 45 grams of sugar. So nearly 50% of my daily sugar allowance in that one meal. Um, so yeah, a good amount of sugar. Um, but again, I always look at sugar as an average. So uh, adults, the recommended healthy amount of, of maximum sugars for an, an average adult a, a day is 90 grams, right? 18 teaspoons. Times that by seven, um, so I can have 500 odd grams of sugar uh, a week. And is that right? Five times seven? Oh, it's 600. I can have 630 grams of sugar a week and still be healthy, right? As always, the devil is in the dose. Having a little bit of sugar here and there isn't going to kill you, especially if you're metabolically healthy, you've got an overall healthy diet, you've got a good level of movement, you do some exercise, then sugar is not an issue. It's only really an issue for someone that is, uh, has any type of insulin resistance, stroke, been diagnosed with any type of diabetes. But uh, just going into that sugar thing, just to confirm what I was just saying. So yeah, I had quite a bit of sugar Saturday and Sunday. Uh, yeah, so Saturday wasn't actually too bad, but Sunday I had quite a bit of sugar. If I look at uh, my week view sugar, so remember that number, 90 grams a day. This was my sugar intake for last week, right? I had 60 grams on Monday, 50 grams on Tuesday, 40 grams on Wednesday, 48 grams on Thursday, 90 grams, so I've hit my allowance on Friday. Saturday, I had 119 grams, and on Sunday, 133 grams. So Saturday and Sunday, I had above, but overall... So I can, and I'm not really the average, that's based on an average adult. I'm fitter and healthier uh, than the average adult, and I'm bigger than the average adult because of my size, but I could, if I stuck to the recommended allowances, 630 grams in a week, and I had 540 last week. So again, don't be too critical of, you know, it's, when we look at our health, it's always about our overall diet. It's never about scrutinizing individual things that we might consume. Uh, anyway, Sunday night was pasta bake uh, and some chicken tenders, the same that we had on Friday night, just what was left over, uh, and a bit of garlic bread. And then last night, oh, I, made, I made an ice cream sundae. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit uh, renowned for my ice cream sundaes between... Me and Rachel, <laughs> yeah, not renowned by anyone else, but I love an ice cream sundae. Uh, me and Rachel love an ice cream sundae. Uh, so I bought a couple of sundae glasses off Amazon, maybe, I don't know, probably a few years ago now. Uh, and I do ice cream sundaes, what I call healthier ice cream sundaes. Um, and, and not really healthy, but lower calorie. So I do lower calorie ice cream sundaes. So I did this week, we went shopping yesterday and we bought Oppo strawberry cheesecake. Never had it before. I don't know if it's new. I don't know if it's new at all. It was full price. I hate buying stuff full price. I only tend to buy low calorie ice creams or big branded ones if they're on sale. It wasn't, but I really wanted to try it. So yes, I did spend five quid on a tub of ice cream. But anyway, so how did I do a lower calorie Sunday yesterday? Took my Sunday glasses, uh, Mars dessert sauce, just a drizzle of that on the inside. Um, and then uh, took a packet of these, which I absolutely love. Absolutely love. Uh, the, uh, I mean, cabbage mini eggs are just top tier anyway. Uh, but these little portion control packets, 12 eggs in there, about 200, how many are they per bag? 190 calories per bag, fantastic. So split one of them between me and Rachel, 90 calories each. So anyway, I thought, right, I want to crush these eggs because I'm going to sprinkle them around the edge of the Sunday glass to stick to the Mars dessert sauce uh, and then sprinkle some on top. So I decided to take these, put them on my counter, took a Pyrex oven dish and thought I'll just smash them up with this Pyrex oven dish. That Pyrex oven dish decided to shatter in my hands idiot hence why i've got a plaster on my finger because the corner of it went straight into my finger so after mopping up a bit of blood uh, and wiping myself down and sticking a plaster on it i did end up with some crushed mini eggs so six mini eggs so three mini eggs sprinkled into the dessert sauce half of this oppo ice cream chopped it off pushed into the ice cream glass some squirty light squirty cream on top and then uh, another sprinkle of mini eggs and that came to 
340 calories and it was absolutely unreal unreal i'll be honest with you if you want an ice cream dessert uh that's calorie controlled go to mcdonald's and get a mcflurry honestly oreo maltese or is it smarty the three standard mcflurry ones not the speciality ones they do when they release new they do a new theme they're 260 calories each I can't think of a better way of spending 260 calories on ice cream than like an Oreo or Maltese and McFlurry. But anyway, I made my own 306, and it was probably bigger than a McFlurry and a few extra bits and pieces in there. Absolutely sensational. Uh, and then last night in bed, we had some pop chips and half a Snickers. There you go. That was my eating for the week. Uh, I did actually have on Sunday afternoon, to be honest with you, which I didn't mention. Um, afternoon, Sunday afternoon snacks was a hot cross bun, uh, a full packet of pineapple, uh, and a pink lady apple so um yeah a really good week's eating lots of veggies going in there so i might not have said but when i've done any of my fried rice dishes it's always had lots of broccoli uh, onions and peppers in there uh, plenty of potatoes going in lots of fruit in the morning um so yeah really 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 good uh, eating right let's do my uh, i'm conscious that uh, time might be ticking on let's do my movement very very quickly uh, I've actually uh, sent the screenshot to my computer so I can remember what my movement is. Uh, oh, yeah, I had a really good week on the old steps. Why? Yesterday, Sunday, we did a four-mile walk. Might have been just over four miles. Uh, we're going to New York in a few weeks, and I want to build my walking stamina up. I always go for a walk twice a day anyway, but I very rarely walk for more than 20, 25 minutes. And don't get me wrong, for a day out, I could walk for hours and hours on end. But obviously, we've got four days of walking for hours and hours on end. So just working on building my stamina up a little bit. So uh, from now until the end of April, when we when we go to, to New York, uh, we're going to do a good uh, a, a four to five mile walk to times a week on top of the other walking we do so we did the first one yesterday and that really rocketed uh the steps up for the week to be fair my steps were really good uh there was only one day last week again i always look at steps as as averages the same as my calories so ten thousand steps a day for me isn't doing ten thousand steps every single day it's about doing seventy thousand steps over a week ten thousand steps on average uh, and on friday i did nine and a half thousand steps but the rest of the days i did do above so i averaged 12 12,000 steps and I think that's the first time I've averaged 12,000 steps this year I've been around the, the 11,000 step mark so yeah a few extra steps in this week uh, and also hit the gym five times last week or this week last week sorry 12,000 steps uh, and then hit the gym now I can never figure out a way uh, I'll have a look at doing some screenshots so you can see exactly what I what I do in the gym. Um, I, I never pin those. Uh, I just need to go into my Apple Activity app and screenshot and maybe edit a little bit. But anyway, if you can see them, I've managed to figure it out. If you can't see them, just trust me, I've been to the gym five weeks last week. Right, let's talk about this week. Now coming up, I'm having my first weight loss break this week weight loss break yes it's something i'm a big advocate of and it's something i teach all my clients to have and it's something i've done throughout my weight loss journey is have a break from weight loss now a lot of people think you have to have a break from weight loss because you need to trick your body into losing weight again if you've been you know trying to lose weight for a period of time that's absolute garbage if you're overweight if you've got an unhealthy body fat percentage you can be in a calorie deficit for four years and you'll still lose body fat why I have a weight loss break is, you know, I always say this, you've got to treat weight loss or you've got to build weight loss into your everyday life, right? And when you do something day in, day out, and it gets easier and more subconscious, the more consistent you are. I don't really think about weight loss. I don't think about tracking my calories. I don't think about getting my steps in. I don't think about going to the gym. It's just what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but you, like work. And that's how I like to think of a weight loss break. It's the annual leave from weight loss, just like you'll book annual leave from work because you might love your job. Um, I love my job, but you need a break. You want a week where I don't have to get up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. every morning. I want a week where, you know, oh, I can have a couple of beers on a Thursday night or a Tuesday night. Um, you know, so... Yeah, it just breaks things up a little bit. I always call it a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. 
So it gives you a bit of focus. Right, I'm going to work hard for 12 weeks because then I've got a week in Tenerife. Like I'm going to nail my weight loss for 12 weeks because then I've got a week off because I've got something coming up. Now, uh, if you join my community or you are a member of my community, I'm actually doing a live this week on uh, on taking weight loss breaks. Uh, part of being a member of my community, or if you're on my one-to-one -one plan, you will automatically get the community, is we have a private Facebook group. And in that group, I do two weight loss coaching lives a week. And yes, one is about uh, going on weight loss breaks. So I'll go into a lot more detail in that live. But basically, I either have, and this is, I've kind of, this is a new term for me, and what I'm going to talk about in the weight loss live is a semi weight loss break and a full weight loss break. A semi weight loss break is just giving yourself a bit more food freedom for a week. So a few extra calories up to your maintenance calories. So your maintenance calories is the amount of calories you burn on average on a day to day basis. If you eat your maintenance, you're not going to lose any weight, but you're not going to gain any, not weight, body fat. Calories just control body fat. So if I eat my calorie maintenance this week, I'm not going to lose any body fat, but I'm not going to gain any body fat. I might gain a bit of water retention, depending on what I'm using those extra calories for, but that will go as quickly as it comes, to be honest with you. So a semi-weight loss break is everything's still in place, tracking calories, looking at my steps. I'm just giving myself a bit more calorie stroke food freedom uh, and that's because on Saturday I've got a day out with the boys day out with the boys uh gonna go out have a good few beers all afternoon um and that is probably gonna mean me being a little bit hungover on Sunday which in turn yeah I'm not gonna try and control my calories on Sunday I'm gonna be uh, wanting a Mackey's breakfast I'm probably gonna be wanting a KFC for me tea or something like that. So uh, I'm going to have my maintenance calories this week. So I normally eat 19,250. I'm giving myself 24,000 calories this week. Whether I use them is down to me, but it's just that extra bit of freedom. So a classic example of you of having a semi-weight loss break is if you've got an event at the weekend, you might have a friend's all day wedding. You might have a little spontaneous weekend away or just, you know, you've got a weekend away or you might be going to a concert on Saturday night. And you want to go out for a few drinks and some nice food. Take the pressure off. A successful weight loss journey is not about being perfect. It's about doing what we need to do more often than not. So the odd week where you're not nailing your calorie deficit will not make a difference. A full weight loss break is where weight loss can do one, right? We chuck it out the window. We chuck it in the bin for a week. A perfect example of a full weight loss break, we call inclusive to Tenerife, Christmas, right? I could not give a toss about weight loss at Christmas. I give a toss about enjoying myself, making nice memories with friends and family and having a right good knees up. Same when I go on holiday. Um, so as soon as I get to an airport, uh, calories don't exist. I'm not bothered, right? Now, as soon as I get back in the country, I'm back at doing what I need to do. I followed that philosophy all the way through my weight loss journey. I went on my first holiday, uh, four months into my weight loss journey, went on to another one, went on another one two, three months after that. Um, and I've had several, you know, in the time where I started February 2014 to when I sort of went, I'm, I'm having, I'm done with weight loss now, which was November 2017. I had three or four all-inclusive holidays, I had a few uh, weekend breaks away, um, had a couple of like just sun holidays to Benidorm. Uh, one of my very good friends lives in France. So I went to see him for a few days. Just, yeah. And and on all those holidays, I didn't go back to being 37 stone, Neil. Actually, I did on one. I did on one. I might have already talked about that in a podcast, but uh, I did on one. Uh, but nine times out of 10, I haven't done. Uh, I've just got back to doing what I do and it's never held me back. In fact, it's prolonged the journey because this is what makes a weight loss journey sustainable. Taking the pressure off. You, some d days, weeks, you're just going to need a few more calories. We have to accept that. And that doesn't matter whether you're on a weight loss journey or not. You know, someone that's never suffered with a weight issue does not eat the same amount of calories every single day, week in, week out. They just can subconsciously, when they eat a bit more, they eat a bit less. I can't do that subconsciously. I've got to put management tools in, aka tracking my calories. Right, that's it for this one. Um, as always, I hope you've found a little bit of motivation, inspiration uh, in listening to my, to my weight loss week, how it's gone. Um, yeah, all good. Uh, if you want, uh, 
my e-cut books, joining my community, my plan. I'll put everything in, the, you know, as always. Uh, if you give this uh, vlog a like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, tell people about it, share it out there, whichever way you can do. I would be eternally grateful. Uh, and until next time on whatever platform, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, a podcast, uh, or you're in my community, make sure you are bossing your weight loss.